And we are live. This is Dark Journalist. Oh, what a fantastic crowd we have with us out there already tonight in the Ideas Room. Of course, I'm joined by the lovely Olivia. Hi, everybody. And uh, Olivia, it's it's UFO Day, don't you know? It's oh. actually it's UAP Day. Mm -hmm. It's the big UAP report, um, which is really <laughs> a balloon with uh, no air in it, <laughs> as we anticipated. You know. The thing that they're trying to do is have it both ways. They're trying not to give us anything on that side from the government, but the media wants to use it to freak everybody out. And then the government can step in and say, well, they were right. We freaked everybody out. And therefore that 95 trillion that's missing from the federal budget, you just forget about that and let us do battle with these aliens. And then send out little puppets and guys like Lou Elizondo to create this illusion and uh, Chris Mellon and people of this ilk. So we have been in the middle of that operation since the TTSA was formed and uh, a little while before that actually, but around 2016 elections when they really kicked in with it. But today was their nine page uh, nothing burger as it were. And yet I have to say uh, the, you know, just this idea that the people on the CIA side of this thing, you know, um, the whole Lou Op part, I could just imagine them sitting there and waiting for something to come out of that report and then jump in to claim credit. And now what they're going to do is they're going to say, oh, that government, they're keeping things from us, when in fact, they work for the government. So this is the big play that we have playing out there. And we'll get into that a little bit tonight, uh, but we're going to look more at the foundation of how this deep state operation around the UFO file got its real legs. And um, it's going to go deep. And there are some connections here I'm going to put on the record for the first time. Uh, so we're looking at some very deep historical connections. You are here for X Series 102. And this is the Cosmos Club. That is UFO Bilderberg, which is going to be really a big dot connector uh, as we get in here. The other thing we're going to do, of course, in the second half of the program is take your questions. There's a lot of breaking news. Uh, unfortunately, we had the suicide with John McAfee. And I'll tell you, as someone who ran a Mac magazine for a long time, like McAfee antivirus was whenever you go to those conferences or whatever, all those people worked for him and they worked for the company. So that whole piece was in the air and um, you know, there were some emails. He was actually going to come on the show at a certain point, and it didn't work out. I think um, his legal troubles had kicked in pretty dramatically, but he gave a lot of interviews. And um, the fundamental thing was he wanted to, at a certain point, really bring this whole deep state issue to light. And so, um, you know, they found him under very suspicious circumstances. That doesn't look like an ordinary death. And he put as much uh out back in october saying you know if something like this ever happens to me it wasn't a suicide so what do we do There's with that real, kind of information true what? ufo research that's the ufo file research that we do on this program and has done been done by people like stanton friedman john mack uh there's an incredible legacy of that work and then there's cia ufo uap junk disclosure right um that is, oh, there's a threat. Lou Elizondo is a savior. And Chris Mellon, you know, billionaire, is uh, going to save everybody. So um, that is the neocon version of UFO disclosure. They get to use it as a threat. And then when they find the $95 trillion, uh, you know, gap there in the federal budget, where did all that money go? We've been fighting aliens, you know. So this is this is how that works. But there's a great danger with it, the way that they've trotted it out, because I've said this a few times, but, you know, when we look at it, when you look at the COVID operation and we see its limitations and you see uh, the incredible, you know, sort of unconstitutional actions and keeping people from church and all these other things, look, that op, as bad as it is and was, and of course, we're still deeply in the middle of it and the repercussions of it, vaccine passports and all the rest. But that op is nothing compared to what they can do uh, with the false UFO invasion op. The UFO threat thing, they can use any, you know, they can say that they're the authorities on the whole thing and that 
you know, we wouldn't be able to tell because how would we be able to know anything about aliens? <laughs> uh, so they could say that there was any kind of a threat and it would be, you know, the, the thing that they liken it to more and more as they talk about the threat is 9-11. Well, let's think about the types of powers that they took during 9-11. They suspended the constitution. Uh, they made traveling basically an interrogation process where they stripped you down, you know, <laughs> in front of your whole family uh, because you wanted to get on a the plane. fact that we have Honey interacting with Adamski. Now, I want to say I've spoken with someone um, in the family of Thomas Townsend Brown and... They related to me that Thomas Townsend Brown was working on um, alien ships that looked like the Adamski ships, that particular model. But also that uh, Brown had, in fact, met with a group of off-world aliens who were operating in those ships. And in fact, uh, she said that at a certain point, there's you know, Adamski is in a lab and there's a miniature version of one of those ships in water. So there's something very unusual and missing. There's a thread that's missing and it's right around the Kennedy era in relation to us understanding the UFO file. And so the idea that Kennedy was sharing this with the Russians and that that's the reason for his death, um, as E. Howard Hunt said to Caddy, really brings us home to what disclosure is. So a lot of people were you know, looking at the hype around the UAP task force thing and all the rest. Well, in fact, what is real disclosure? Disclosure is that there's another culture out there visiting us, right? That's the official disclosure. But the other piece of that disclosure is what has the government done in relation to that reality? How many people have been killed? Have they killed presidents to keep the secret? Who controlled the wall of secrecy? Which organization was primarily in charge of it? It's yes. Okay, and Q uh, Man 2.0. I think Eisenhower's last public broadcast warning about the unwarranted influence of the military industrial complex and its power should be viewed in direct relation to the UFO fake aliens issue. What say you? Nice. DJ? No question. What he should have said was we need to guard against the military industrial UFO secret complex. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Uh, there's no question Eisenhower was aware of it. He passed it to Kennedy. Kennedy could not believe the types of powers that the CIA had when he got into office. 